Hello lighting people, welcome back to my Lua for Grand MA3 tutorial series. In this episode, we're going to be talking about Lua functions because functions are the backbone of code. You cannot have readable code without a function. So let's dive in. I'm going to open up Visual Studio Code and make sure I'm in my folder, create a new file. This file is going to be called episode one, functions and data types, because that's what we're talking about today. And always put .lua at the end of your file name. I'm going to start by making a main function. So the way you make a function is type function and give it a name. I'm just gonna call it main, and then you put parentheses. VS Code automatically completes your parentheses so you can type inside of them, but just type another one at the end to end it. And then I'm gonna hit enter twice and type end. That's how you end the function. And then return main. So what this does is when the code interpreter goes through and reads the code, it finds this return and goes, oh, okay, so we have to return main. Main is a function, so it calls the function and whatever ha whatever is in the function gets executed at that point. Now, as I said, this code gets read whenever it is returned. There are There is another way that you can call a function and that is by, well, calling it rather than returning it. So let's say, now I have to have a main function to start with, but within this, I can have another function. So let's say I have another function called uh, example. And this one ends. And then down here, I want to call the function. I'm going to do so by typing example parentheses and that calls it. But you might wonder what the parentheses are actually for. So what the parentheses are for is to specify an argument. Whenever you create a function, you can put arguments in the parentheses that then are used in executing whatever is inside the function. That will make more sense later, but for now, with these kinds of functions, you can just put empty parentheses and you don't really need to be making functions at the moment anyway, so we'll get into that at the right time. Until then, I'm going to talk about data types. You have to understand variables and data types in order to get started in Lua. So a variable is a container that holds data. When you declare a variable, you can determine what data it holds. This will stay the same until you override it. A variable's name can be anything, but cannot contain special characters and cannot start with a number but can contain a number. Variable names are case sensitive. So to show you an example of that, I can name a variable my var. If I call this, I have to capitalize the V and nothing else because it that's how it was set. And so that is the name of the variable. I can not name a variable one my, that doesn't work, but I can name it my one variable. So it can contain a number, it just can't start with a number. Now, there are three important data types in Lua, strings, numbers, and booleans. I'm going to create variables with a different data type so that you can see how they work. So I'm gonna create a string, and a string is absolutely anything you can type. Just put it in quotes. So single or double quotes will work, but for neatness, I prefer to use single quotes. You cannot use the same type of quotes inside one another. So. Let's say I'm gonna set this string to my string says, I can't put another set of single quotes to use quotes, but I can use double quotes. So my string says, hi. <laughs> so that works, it will interpret it as text, but you can't use multiple sets of single quotes inside of single quotes. There is another option if you absolutely have to, you can use the backslash as an escape symbol. So then that escapes it and it gets viewed as text. Uh, and then go hi, backslash again, another single quote. That works, it's just not very easy. So it's easier to use whatever type of quotes you don't want to use inside your string. A string always stays exactly the same as you typed it. And when strings are compared, they are case sensitive. So when I look at the string, it's always going to have 
a capital M and it's also going to have a space at the end. If a string contains only a number, it will still be read as a string, however, unless you convert it to an integer. So what is an integer? Well, a number can be any number and it can include a decimal point, mathematical operators, and so on. Trailing zeros after a decimal are cut off though, and that's very important to our work with MA3 as you'll see. So I can set my number to be 1.31, but if I want to set it to 1.310, when I call it, it's only going to be read as 1.31. That is critical to understand when working in MA3 because we have executor numbers that are labeled 301 through 315 actually and beyond that, but the main ones that we use are 301 through 315. And so if I try to do 310 and I try to plug that into my console, my console is gonna go page 1.31? What? I don't know what that is. And it's just going to throw an error. So in that case, you would have to use a string because if you put, and I'm going to create another one, string two, if you put it in quotes, it's not going to cut off that zero. It's going to look like this. So the other type of value is a Boolean. A Boolean is either true or false. So my Boolean can be true or it can be false. When you compare two things to another, the returned answer that you get will be a Boolean, but you can also set a variable to a Boolean if you need to, and you'll understand more about that later when we start using it. The one other thing I do need to talk about is nil. So nil is nothing. Um, my variable equals nil. Nil is absolutely nothing. If you try to compare something to nil, you'll always get an error. It will just be like, I can't, contact, I can't concatenate a nil value or whatever. Instead, if you have a variable that could be nil, you'll have to first say, if the value is valid, then do this. So now that you understand data types, we're going to go back to functions. With this main function that I have, I'm going to call an MA3 function, printf which requires a string as an argument. So printf is the name of the function. And then I get to put a string in these parentheses and whatever string I put in here will be used to execute the printf function. In this particular case, the printf function takes my string and prints it in the system monitor and the command line history. So I'm going to type hello world and I'm going to take this and copy it and paste it into this plugin right here. Save. And when I run it, it says hello world in both of these places. Now I can also put a variable in place of this string as long as I first declare the variable with a string. So I can turn this string into hello world. And then instead of this string here, I can put string, the variable, no quotes, and when I plug that into MA3, it is going to do the same thing. Now, the reason for this is because my variable string is equal to hello world. So whenever it sees the variable string, it just replaces it with hello world. Now, just to show you how this is working behind the scenes, I'm going to do an example of making my own function with an argument built in. This is going to be a redundant example because printf already does this, but I'm going to make a print function with a a variable my string as an argument. So this is a local variable local to this function. It's not going to exist outside of this. It's just whatever's in that parentheses. So my string, uh, and then we're going to call another function printf to print my string. So we end it, we go down here, we call it print, and then we can put whatever we want here. We could put a variable again, or we could put words and put a string, whatever it says. So now what's happening is it's taking this right here and 
whatever the first thing is in this parentheses is going to be matched to the first thing in this parentheses. So it goes, okay, I have a variable my string. This must be in place of the variable my string. So anywhere in here that I see my string, I'm actually going to use this. You can put multiple arguments. You would just separate them by a comma. So you can do this and then another one. I don't have any use for any other ones, but basically that's how it works. Hopefully that gives you a good visual to understand what's really happening when you put arguments into functions. And of course I can run this. And it's going to And it printed hello world, but it gave me an error. I wonder why that might be. <laughs> well, uh, at least I get to troubleshoot so you can see what that looks like. So it says Lua API syntax error at 11. That means line 11. It says printf string returns nothing. Okay, let's see what's at line 11. It says printf, aha. Uh -huh. So I used incorrect capitalization here and it doesn't match the one up there. So now I have done that, that should work now. Control A, Control C. Try that again. And there we go, it works this time. So that's kind of what your error messages might look like. Syntax errors are relatively easy. There are harder <laughs> errors to deal with that you will run into, hopefully not too often. Now, before I finish, I'm going to make an example of a more complex MA3 function. This one is called confirm. So the confirm function will display a pop-up with several customizable elements. It takes two strings. Let me type this out actually. So we're gonna go confirm two strings for the title and main text. I'm gonna go title, here's the main text, hello. This is my text, there we go. And an optional integer, which should be set to nil that determines otherwise which screen it goes on to. And then lastly, an optional Boolean, which determines whether or not there will be a cancel button in the pop-up. True means there will be, false means there will not. The default value is true, so the confirm function could be called with only two strings and it will work perfectly. But to specify that there should not be a cancel button, you have to write it out as follows. So put a nil and then a false. That will prevent there from being a cancel button. I'm going to run this and show it to you. So it gives me this pop-up and I can hit okay. There is no cancel button. If I go back and remove this, or it would be the same if I change this to true. Then what happens is it has an okay and a cancel button. Later, we will find out how to actually make use of the information of whether the user pressed the OK or the cancel button. But in the next video, we are going to get into if statements and conditional loops. These are really fun and one of the big things that set Lua apart from normal console use and make it so powerful. I really hope you're as excited to get into it as I am. See you in the next video.